um hello everyone we are group number five and we're going to present on the major stories of agricultural extension agents in bhutan so now let's talk about the content of our presentation so first of all we're going to talk about the history of agricultural extension agent but it could be more of a, a major story as well because we're going to talk about how the second five-year plan helps spread ex, uh, extension agent extension program or extension activities in bhutan and then that we're going to head to the three major stories of uh, agricultural extension agent in bhutan the first one is going to be the, about the farmers group the second one is going to be about extension approaches for small farms in Bhutan. And then the last one is going to be about uh, the white button mushroom trial cultivation being a success in Chuka. So now I'm going to talk about how the second five-year plan helps spread extension activities throughout our country. It does sound like a history of extension activities, but it is a success story of extension activity since like e even after the first five-year plan was completed the farmers throughout our countries continued practicing the traditional form of farming but uh, after and during the second five-year plan the farmers were provided with adequate knowledge about different methods of farming they were provided with improved varieties of seeds they were demonstrated plant protection they were demonstrated with new farm machineries that helped mechanize agriculture so like i said extension work was already started during the first five-year plan in 1961 so during which one agriculture research officer and seven sub-inspectors were appointed in the southern bhutan but um, but during the second five-year plan the government decided to expand the extension activities throughout the country and then and the ex extension program um, it was divided into three regions north east and south so during this program the extension agent or the extension officer would supply improved varieties of seeds they would supply fertilizers and chemicals chemicals such as pesticides fungicide and then herbicide and the extension agent they would also help popularize improved varieties of crops they also help popularize better fertilizer mineral practices and they helped um, demonstrate plant protection and also farm machinery was introduced to agriculture um, during the second five-year plan seven farms were established throughout the northern and the eastern region of the country out of which the ones at Paro and Wadi Podrang had already been started during the first five-year plan but and now they were being expanded and the additional farms were in Bumthang, Jemgang, Mongar, Tashigang and Tala. The agricultural extension uh, to, like during that time were of two kinds type A extension and type B extension. Type A extension were carried out in the farms that were established in the northern and eastern regions and the type B uh, were carried out in agricultural research stations that acted as a base which was mostly in the southern region. No agricultural uh, research officer were being provided to um, at the extension centers in the southern Bhutan um, whereas extension agricultural extension officers were being provided to the type a extension centers in the northern and eastern Bhutan and the programs of the extension work were of in the north and the east Bhutan were as follows in 1966 to 67 the extension activities were going to be carried out in Thimpu Tashigang 1 Tashigang since it was large it was divided into three parts and then Paro, Wandi Fodra, Bum Thang. In 67 to 68, it was in Jemgang, Mongar, Punakha, Chapcha, and Tashigang too. In 68 and 69, it was in Ha, Kurte, and Gasa. In between 69 and 70, it was in Tashigang 3 and Dagana.
The extension activities in the southern Bhutan were as follows. In 1966 to 67, it was carried out in Sipsuwan, Kumaone, Tirang, Samti, Kalikolla, Sarpang, and Gelipu. In between 1967 to 68, it was in Sipsu 2, Funzaling, and Dorohang. Between 1968 to 69, it was in Lamidara. And between 1969 to 1970, it was in Dagapela. And then between 1970 to 1971, it was in Sabdu Jongkhang. So the extension staff were able to improve the yield of the farms as they carried out several mineral, varietal and plant protection demonstration over a large area. So in addition, the program, it also helped improve the knowledge the farmers had about improved and scientific methods of cultivation. So by the end of the second five year plan, there was an increase in the yield by 5%. And then during the third five year plan, the extension officer, they continued to familiarize the farmers with improved farming practices through demonstration, exhibition, talks and other aids. The extension program, it also ensured a continued supply of seeds, fertilizers and farm machineries to the farmers. Because of this extension activities during these two five year plans, it helped create a base so that agriculture would improve drastically in the future. This is the reason why I said that this may sound like a history of extension activity, but it is a success story. Because, because of this two five year plans, um, it help, helped introduce farm machinery, which indirectly helped mechanize agriculture. It provided farmers with new knowledge and this was the first time um, extension activities were carried out throughout the country. Hello everyone, I'll be presenting about one of the major stories of agriculture extension agent in Bhutan. I'll be talking about uh, how agriculture extension agent helped in forming farmers group. Farmers group for Department of Forest uh, existed way before the existence of farmers group for agriculture. So what is farmers group? According to Cooperative Regulations of Bhutan, 2010 defines farmers group as a group of not less than three members deriving economic benefits from one or more economic enterprises related to renewable natural resource sector. So our farmers group is a group that has not less than three members and, de and, de and they are benefited economically uh, by the economic enterprises that is related, related to renewable natural resource sector. And for the registration of farmers group, as stated earlier, they need to have three members that is also from three different households. Market access and growth intensification project funded by International Fund for Agriculture Development and co-financed by SNV, that is Netherlands Development Organization and Government of Sweden started in 2011 to improve small landholder farmers' food security and connect them to the market that they would not otherwise be able to access. IFAD has concentrated its operation in the eastern part of the country where the population uh, is dense and food insecurity level is high. Actually, the, the, actually this project was uh, proposed five years ago but only in 2011 they got approved and their main aim was to uh, improve small, land ho small landholder farmers uh, food security and connect them to the market and they have concentrated their project in eastern part of the country uh, because uh, there the population is very dense and food insecurity level is high. Most of these schools are boarding school and they need uh, a large number of vegetables and they usually import those vegetables from India and uh, and vegetables such as potatoes and cabbage that the kids slowly are important and they found that the students diet weren't healthy. So they started this project uh, thinking that the farmers group would benefit the nearby school in providing such facilities. In 2009, farmers groups and cooperatives within Bhutan were given legal framework for registration in Cooperative Act of Bhutan. In 2010, registration guidelines were clarified in Cooperative Rules and Regulations of Bhutan and Department of Agriculture Marketing and Cooperative was created to administer the Act. For the smooth functioning of uh, farmers group, 
registration guidelines were formed and the Department of Agriculture, Marketing and Cooperative was created to administer the act of farmers group. Registration of farmers group is done by local EA and Georg administration which is later sent to Zonga Cooperative Register that is the Zonga Planning Officer. Uh, during the registration of farmers group, local extension agent needs to check whether the farmers have concrete business plan or not uh, or whether the farmers have the required number of members. And after checking all those things, local e uh, extension agent along with Georg administration signs the registration form and is later sent to Zonko Cooperative Register for registration and certification. Groups and cooperatives are provided with capacity building in business management and governance from its local agriculture extension officer. So it is the responsibility of local agriculture extension officer to train the groups and cooperatives on business management. Before forming the groups, extension agent has several meetings with the farmers to advocate them on advantages of forming the groups. Only the interested farmers who showed up formed the groups under the guidance of extension agent. So before forming the groups, it was the responsibility of extension agent to advocate the farmers on what is farmers groups and what are the advantages of farmers group and how the farmers group groups will be run after several meetings uh, those farmers who are interested turned up and formed the group and formed the group under the guidance of extension agents Extension agent discuss with nearby schools and institutes regarding the marketing of farmers' product. Farmers, along with extension agent, sign the contract with nearby schools and institutes. After the formation of farmers' groups, farmers uh, need to market their product. So, extension agent discuss with nearby schools and institutes regarding the marketing of farmers' products and sign the contract. At first, farmers' groups were provided free facilities such as greenhouse, seeds, what, uh, water pipes, sprinkler. Uh, basket to store vegetables, etc. After a few years, local extension agent stopped providing such facilities. Mm, in the beginning, when the farmers groups were formed, farmers weren't as progressive as they are just now and they weren't economically sound, so they were provided free facilities. After a few years, uh, uh, farmers were able to generate income from their products and they are now in position to purchase such facilities, so uh, extension agents stop providing uh, facilities free of cost. Members of groups get chance to visit farms in other districts and attend training on farm mechanization. Now it is the uh, responsibility of uh, extension agent to, <clears throat> to choose which members to be sent for farm visits and uh, attend training. Uh, actually, the members of farmers group has more advantages than other farmers because they get a chance to visit farms in other districts and attend training on farm mechanization. Farmers groups have been able to secure regular income from its product. So, farmer, me members of farmers groups are now economically sound as they are getting regular income from their uh, product and make their livelihood. Formation of farmers group is one of the major success of extension agent because they brought changes in farmers life and we can see that the members of, ex uh, of farmers groups are now uh, able to generate their own income and live independently. At the end of 11th five year plan, uh, around 405 farmers groups were formed. I will be talking about the extension approaches for better farming in smaller parts of our country. This is the story of Salamji Geo under Davano Zonkhak. So the, this village had uh, steep slopes, they got pretty heavy rainfall and they lacked the mechanism to overcome problems like soil erosion. Thus, this, this led to land degradation problems. Uh, land degradation problems can be uh, their top cells were being washed away, there was gradual decrease in soil fertility which directly affected their crop yield. So the extension agent there recognized these problems as a major issue. So first of all, he made sure that this issue was passed on to agriculture administrative office of their Zonkhak. Uh, so from there, they got help from RNR sectors. Like um, there were several researchers from these sectors coming to help them. So with their help, extension, the extension agent carried out a project to implement approaches to overcome these land degradation problems. Here, the extension agent played a major role in communicating with the farmers and changing their mindset for them to come together and perform as a community. Uh, 
Um, so this project started a new technique like land terracing, uh, addition of stone risers, plantation of hedges along with fruit trees and even a water diverser channel was constructed. A multi-purpose tree species nursery was also established with the help of the extension agent. And to ensure that this system of uh, land management was being continued, even a group called the uh, Salamji Pashing Shinsokpa was formed by the extension agent. And after these techniques were being implemented, the results were clearly visible. The steep plants were no more steep, they were turned into terrace fields uh, along with uh, stone risers, uh, bamboo trees and fruit trees along the cultures. So these techniques were hugely impactful in the lives of the farmers. Uh, the uh, rate of soil erosion were decreased, uh, the soil fertility was maintained and their crop yield also increased. Uh, so this project became so popular that within the within next two years, about 290 farmers approached the extension agent for the same support and help. Once again, welcome to our presentation. So now I will briefly explain on my part, which is white button mushroom trail cultivation success in Chuka. As per the Quinzel 2018, Chuka Zonkax initiated to try white button mushroom farming has been successful one. In April 2018, four areas were identified in Darla, Simalaka and Cheshilaka for this trail program by the Zonkak agriculture sector. Moreover, four staff from Zonkak agriculture sector were sent to the Punjab Agriculture University, Ludhiana, under India for the training on white button mushroom farming. During this trail program, various organizations gave support to realize the white button mushroom a successful program. The training is realized with the funding support under the India's government project tight assistance. It was also supported by the NMC National Mushroom Center. Then the compost was made at Dala and a different farm site with the varying elevation within the Zonka was selected to understand the better site for the future cultivation of mushroom, white button mushroom. The preliminary data collection shows that all the locations are viable for the cultivation of the white button mushroom. The first harvest was done in 75 days from the day the composting was initiated. The white button mushroom cultivation was tied for the first time in Zonkakin. It was a good experience for the farmers and youths too. The major ch challenges faced during this trail program was the need for the constant monitoring of farms. A farming group in Timasham, the youth in agriculture program which are run by the three graduates were also involved in this trail. When the group of youth took up the farming, the Zonkak administration is willing to give technical support. After this trail program, the Zonkak is open and exposed to new ideas. With the success of this trail program, Priority would be given to the upscale the farms in Chuka and other parts of the country. The outcome of this trail program is communicated with the Department of the Agriculture in Bhutan to upgrade and upscale the farm. On the top of that, the extension agent are hoping that more farmers and youth will come forward to take up the farming of white button mushroom.